Hello and welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video we'll be taking a look at the Beam and Block Floors module. To start, first we'll go to the Ground Floors category here in the Module Toolbar and select Beam and Block Floors. And then create the module. And Price a Job automatically opens an estimate based on some assumptions of the size. Here we can input the length and width of our floor by either inputting the value directly or by using the slider. We'll set ours at 4 by 5 meters. And we can expand our sketch pane to have a closer look. And with Price Job's new 3D modules, the modules are interactive to reflect the changes we make within our stages, but they're also a fully 3D model which we can grab by the corners to rotate for a closer look at our various components. So we'll add our insulation back in and get started with our setup. Now that we've added our length and width for our floor, now we can set the spacing of our blocks. We can choose to either set the blocks on the short side at 215 millimeters width, or we can place them lengthwise at 440 millimeters width. And if we rotate our image a little, we can probably zoom in here, try to give us a better view. Here we can see the blocks are laid lengthwise. If we set that to short side, now we can see that the blocks are laid lengthwise. Next, we will specify whether the end of the floor is to be set for wall bearing or beam bearing. And we'll just rotate our image and zoom out a bit so we can have a better look at the ends of this floor. So here is the end beam, and we can see that currently that this is set for beam bearing. If instead this final section was to be wall bearing, we could set that. And we can see that the initial beam has been removed and that this first block will rest on the wall. In our case, we'll have that set for beam bearing. And Price Job has calculated that we'll require 15 beams at 5 meters each. Next, we can address the excavation to reduce levels. Currently, Price Job has calculated this at 6 cubic meters based on an excavation depth of 300 millimeters. We can set this to excavate by either hand or machine. And because the costs of using a machine are lower, we'll use a machine. And then we can choose the machine here and adjust the machine's settings here in terms of productivity, delivery and collection costs, and fuel consumption per hour. These are standard settings based on the machine we've chosen. Next is the disposal of soil. The expanded volume of soil is 7.32 cubic meters, based on 6 cubic meters of excavation, plus the expansion rate which we can see under the cog settings here of 22%. We can specify the load method, either by machine or by hand. And Price Job has calculated the skip quantity and size that we'll require to remove this volume of soil. This irregular skip quantity will be combined with our other modules to ensure all of our skips are full before we send them off. However, if this is the only module that will be using a skip, we can just click the plus button to round this up to the next nearest whole number. Then there's the hardcore fill. Let's just rotate our image for a closer look at the hardcore. And we can see the thickness is currently set at 100 millimeters. We can change this if we want, set that to 300 millimeters, and we can specify either crushed concrete or the superior MOT type 1. And under the cog settings, we can specify the hardcore ratio in kilograms per cubic meter. And once again, Price Job has calculated the volume of hardcore that we'll require. Next is the oversight concrete, and the system has calculated that we require 2 cubic meters of concrete based on a concrete thickness of 100 millimeters. If we were to adjust this, our sketch will update, as well as the volume of concrete required. Here we can specify whether we'll be using a ready mix and the type of mix we prefer to use, a mix on site, and the ratio, or we can input a custom ratio by inputting our cement ratio and ballast ratio separately, or we can order a concrete pump, set our concrete mix, and the number of pumps required. Under the cog settings, we can adjust the cubic meters per day of the pump, the minimum concrete load, and part load charge. Price Job has calculated the part load charge for this project and shows the calculation below. Next, we'll take a look at the sleeper wall. We can deselect this if no sleeper walls are required, and that removes it from our sketch pane as well. We can add this back in and then specify the height. Perhaps we'll need a larger sleeper wall, 500 millimeters. And depending on your structural specifications, you can add as many sleeper walls as you need. There's two, three, four, five, or six. 
Next, we'll take a look at the block and beam floor. Price Job has calculated that we require 20 square meters of block and beam, and we can select from the drop down menu the materials that we prefer to use. If there's a material that we want to use that's not represented here, we can click Edit Pack and choose a different material from the Price Job library, or we can add a new material by inputting the title, unit, price, category, and website link, and then save that for future use. In this case, we'll just cancel out and we'll use the default blocks from the Price of Job library. Next is the damp proof membrane. And if you won't be requiring this, you can just deselect that. And that is removed from the sketch. And let's just rotate our view so we can have a better view of that. We'll add our membrane back in. And then we can see our membrane represented in the sketch. And for this, again, Price of Job has calculated the area of membrane required. And we can select the material type from the drop down list. For the insulation, again, we can toggle this stage to see it represented in the sketch, see the area required, and select the materials from the drop down list below. If we're looking for a material that's not represented here, we can click Edit Pack, and we can search the library for different materials. For example, we might try Kingspan, and we see there is a variety of materials listed here, but the pricing has not been added. So for simplicity, we'll just stick with the Celotex and maybe select a thicker board. And for insulation, only rigid boards can be used beneath screed, unlike a timber floor where you could use mineral wool rolls between the joists. And lastly is the screed layer. So this is calculated at 20 square meters of screed at 65 millimeter thickness. We could use a thicker layer of screed, say 75 mil, and adjust our ratio here. If we close our sketch pane, We'll see that our estimate has completed each stage separately as we've made all of our changes and calculated the total cost for this module. In addition, an automatic description has been added to describe each stage for the excavation, the leveling and compacting, the disposal of soil, the allowance for a skip and a skip loader, backfilling, ready mixed concrete and a concrete pump, the sleeper walls, the precast beam flooring, the damp proof membrane, the Celotex insulation, the vapor barrier, and screed. If you'd like to add any notes manually, you can do so by clicking Add Note and then typing Freeform here. And if you prefer to edit any of these automatic descriptions, you can do so by deselecting Auto. However, any changes you make will be deleted if you reactivate the Auto function. Here at the top, we can rename our module title. So we might call this Garage Floor. And that is automatically updated here in our description. And when we consult our reports tab, we can see each of our various modules added here, including the beam and block floor we just added with the title garage floor, the various descriptions that we've just seen, and the grand total for all modules. If we prefer to see a breakdown by module, we can change the pricing breakdown here to show subtotals. And we can also show subtotals for the various materials, labor, plant, and tool. We can also choose to show an advanced quotation by showing or hiding the description materials, labor, plant and tool, and other costs. We can also conceal pricing or units, but most often a simple quotation is usually all that's required by the customer. We can also add any notes or disclaimers to the bottom of our quotation here by typing freely within this field, or we can click the plus button to select items from the price job template library. And once our quotation is complete, we can either print it out, export it as a PDF or Word document, or email it directly to the client from within Price a Job. And that's how to use the Beam and Block Floors module. Thank you for using Price a Job. Mm -hmm.